Hi, good evening. Um, our language course, Basket Starfish. This is Sarah Chiu. Uh, glad to be here again to talk to you this week. And as you can see from the screen, that is the Basket Starfish uh, as a prototype of our language uh, core. And because I believe all languages are related, no language is isolated. And we are all speaking the remnants of the original language. And um, the uh, language as a language family tree uh, should be changed because as long as we believe in that we have hierarchy and I also bring in a little bit of a feminine view of looking at language and also from an eastern point of view and um, also as a traveler and here it is here I am thank you for tuning in um, this week I'm going to talk a little bit uh, uh, of building. Uh, last week I already started and this week you will see that you know I compare from ancient Sumerian, uh, Eastern uh, hieroglyph and also um, I mean Egyptian hieroglyph and also the Chinese oracle bones and you will see that uh, most of them you know they are, are very very similar as you can see it seems that they are doing the, the same thing using the same technique in building and uh, as far as I can see and here you are I will start with the um, slideshow okay um, once again you know I will uh, introduce an east and west integrated view uh, I believe that pictograph uh, actually tells us more than uh, just alphabets and then the Western scholar always talk negatively about pictograph and I will show you uh, the reason why I disagree with it and I also bring in a lot of travel experiences and uh, to compare with the pure Eurocentric uh, theories and um, because uh, you will see that in the slides I will show you the uh, human concept uh, was formed from the very basic uh, belief you know from their spiritual belief uh, from the uh, living sound of R ah, how you make that living R ah sound which become a bull shape and uh, how we slowly build from our floor mat to our big buildings and uh, still you will see that uh, mainly the A and which represents all vowels A E I O U and then the K and the G, uh, G sound I'm talking about sound not the writing okay the K G or the K, Q in the C writing also took the lead as you will see later and this time I'm going to bring in a little bit about the D and T sound okay because the D and T sound uh, please don't look at the alphabets just take them as sounds okay and I will start right now and uh, again uh, this research is based on Cantonese and all, all uh, Chinese dialects because they are less mutated than the Mandarin sound most of the scholars are using Mandarin as the base that's why they don't see the similarity between all these languages okay um, again uh, you will see the interlacing etymology notes as I said uh, most of them are so intertwined that is actually very difficult to separate them and uh, obviously uh, the language is not tree-like, non-linear and also no hierarchy in the language family. You and me and everyone in this planet Earth, you know, were speaking the remnants of the original language. We just branch out in a different direction. The core is, was stu uh, is still the same. First of all, you will look at the architect, you know, as I said, this week I'm going to talk a little bit about building. The architect and also the king and the guy and the kai which will change to Caesar later okay and then and why is it you know because you know they are uh, even in English the architect and also the king and guide is lead by the uh, by the form a and sound a and also the Kerr sound as you can see the car here is understood as the by the Egyptian as the soul and this one in the east will be Atman also as the soul but uh, even ignoring that you know as the leading uh, of our motion our movement and you will see that 
that the from the Greek um, and the Phoenician onwards, these two actually flip around and become the now A alphabet and the K alphabet. Okay, and uh, of course, you know, these two alphabet and sound always become the head and the leader, even in all writing system, the East and the West. And then um, the uh, in the other way of uh, understanding it in the non-materialistic world will be understanding it as an unseen energy or the consciousness. Okay, and then this is uh, very very known uh, stone plaque of a um, Sumerian culture. This is said to be uh, in the two, 2500 BC and uh, representing the king of Lagash. Uh, his name is U Nashi and this U itself you know is also uh, kind of like the this energy itself and um, I, uh, but this time I'm going to talk about buildings, so I will, I don't want to distract you. But you will see that um, the uh, leader was uh, looked at it as the alpha bull. Uh, the leader of the uh, herd is an alpha bull, and the leader of human being is also an alpha male. Okay, and then um, the Sumerian have these two signs, you know, uh, uh, read as aga as lead, and but as you can see, you know, this is actually a bull horn turned this way, and the four horn right there you can actually see some auxiliary cultural expression by the other uh, remnants of the Sumerian culture so nothing comes out of the blue they always find cultural expression in different way my whole research is trying to find all this auxiliary cultural expression in all different cultures to support why writing uh, uh, developed in certain way okay and this is a Chinese and we sing Ngak. this is Aga this is Ak okay and we just put, put more attention to the R uh, sound right there and then as you can see um, it actually means you know the temple and the forehead this is where the brain and the thinking is this is where that leads you to action so actually they are kind of uh, synonym and but I want you to see that the Chinese also use a upside down bull right there actually this one is actually a Chinese symbol showing all unseen energy as you can see that is represented right there and then in Arabic, uh, they have a word agal. Agal is, is actually uh, means the, the mind, the intellect, or also as the chief, as a human being. As you can see, the ag agal, and it all depends on whether you pay more uh, stress on the er uh sound or the g sound. Okay, this is agal. This is ag. This ah. Uh, this is ag. This is agal. Okay. And then uh, the Sanskrit would be Agra. Agra is the head, the tip, or something anterior. As you can see, even in English, whenever you see the A, it's, the, it's something leading, okay? And then uh, in Sanskrit, is a mix of uh, a lot of different cultures too. And you will see Naga as the lead, and then Akka as the forehead. And you can ignore the N and the L as a weak uh, the consonant that leads it. The important thing is the Akka, sa and Akka sound, okay? Okay, and this means forehead. And of course, in Greek, you have the Argo to lead, and also you have the Agro as the uh, something in front. And uh, it comes to Latin, Argo is to lead. And of course, you know, acronym, all these acro words still mark something that's leading in the front. It's that alpha bull right there. So another two English words, the actor and the creator. The actor and the creator also led by this A and also the, 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 the K, you know, uh, subtly. And again, I show you this. And um, this is a, a period when the whole uh, ancient world started to build like crazy and this is a ritual basket that the leader was carrying of course you know when he comes out to carry it like that the rest of the people will be doing that you know to support that and of course these are uh, builders but I want you to pay attention to this thing, you know, and um, I lived in very remote places, you know, uh, in different times. So uh, the thing that I learned is that uh, one object actually come to uh, use in a different way as long as you change in its direction. And I will show you that why is the uh, basket actually a very important 
uh, important and linked to this all these A and K sound as well. And because the ancients spiritually believe they, they, they believe that there is unseen growing power, this G or G right there is the Sumerian writing. It means either the reed that can be weaved into the basket, and also it also means the core, the essence, and the gist of something. So from that, it actually weave into the basket. And now you are looking at uh, Egyptian hieroglyph. This is a K in Egyptian hieroglyph. Of course, if you flip the the basket bas upside down, it really become the cap. Even if you choose to write it, it uh, differently with a K with a C, the sound is still a K, right? Cap. But now, of course, you know in America, you will only understand cap in this because you are far far away from the original material at the very beginning. But anyway, um, the um, this weaving technique become our floor mat and then uh, slowly as we start to raise our uh, living uh, environment we become uh, uh, raising our ground and we come to uh, we start to build as a foundation so uh, the Chinese writing still uh, we call gay or K it actually it's a basket on top of that with an earth rammer right there it means base and foundation later on uh, you will see that uh, the uh, rammer itself actually become uh, the word gong in Chinese, which means to work or to labor. Of course, this is a building time that everybody started to build. And in Chinese, there is a writing like that that has the sound of gun. Gun actually means clay. Um, still, you can see that either it's ge or ke or ge sound, okay? And um, as you can see, we also underwent the same uh, system that people were carrying clay, you know, to work. And we have a word like that in Gan, and this word, it actually becomes difficult and anything to do with earth work. Why is that? Because when you start to build all these ritual places right there, of course, they are difficult work, you know, not the leader, but the rest of the people were undergoing very difficult work. But of course, you have to understand that uh, earth work at the beginning doesn't mean only the builders the farmers and the miners were also doing exactly the same thing um, okay and then in hieroglyph you have this word uh, this symbol right here uh, read as card to work as you can see all this is okay and and they are also still carrying the basket right there and then I will show you a quick picture of the earth rammer and you will see that the Sumerian actually begin to have uh, the, the a sound a stop right there okay and then um, the, another one as the gong right there for them later on they change to the meaning begin uh, to change the meaning as the shrine and establishment of course it's closely connected with uh, building and then the Chinese have the same thing right there we maintain the sound gong right there in Cantonese and then it means to work to labor as you can see very easily through this earth rammer right there but now I'm going to pay I'm going to pay a little bit more attention to this sound that right there okay and um, this is where your Adobe uh, word came from uh, first of all the uh, uh, sound right there in, in English is actually the uh, uh, it means uh, the action itself is also actually represented by the concept of the unseen energy. This unseen energy was what was it doing? It was actually pounding. And there is a Sumerian writing right there, the sound of do. Do means uh, the you can see the horn animal there. It means to thrash something, to push on something, and to pound on something. Okay, the do. You can actually easily uh, read the ado already okay and gradually it actually really become the adobe and means to push to thrush and to gore because the gore sound actually belong to the cow itself and um, which is the cattle okay and then of course in english you will say this action that's ramming you see even in english you still maintain the animal right there the ramming of the earth you know the rammed earth Okay, and then of course, if I show you this, you might have seen it, you know, in your day to day life if you live in more remote places. And this is the Sumerian, uh, later become dub sound. And then the doubler is a tower. Of course, you know, you will see this is a picture I took in Yemen. Uh, this is a tower that uh, made by this uh, pound earth right there. And then they have. Uh, 
uh, uh, symbol like that, which later uh, shift uh, 90 degrees also, and the, uh, has the rhythm of gong, which means just shine and establishment. And if I turn it 90 degrees, you actually find some uh, building very, very co close to its shape. It is the Sanskrit stupa, okay? This uh, stupa is actually a Sanskrit word, as you can compare the form here and there, okay? And then the Chinese has a word gun. Gun actually means to uh, join things together. What are they joining together but earth, right? And then, but this word actually used for other purposes. We borrow another word to, for the sound gun, which means a Taoist shine. And then, uh, but I will explain to you why we borrow that word. And But you can see the Taoist shine and the tower at, this, at, uh, at the early uh, form. Uh, you can see they are very, actually very, very similar. And then um, uh, we borrow a word actually uh, from a bird. But why is it so? Because, you know, ignoring all the bird, we actually, actually borrow this form right there. You will see from a Sumerian sign. This is uh, the Sumerian. Sumerian symbol to work you can see it's still the key and uh, the K sound okay and then it is the ramming of the layers of earth together can you see this joining of the earth uh, the Chinese actually have that right there the joining and the joining and that's why we borrow this writing the mean the tower is shine right there it's layers of layers of soil right there and then the hieroglyph actually have the building uh, writing two different ones like this and like there's either uh, piling up a wall and also pounding the earth look at this this is Chinese aren't they exactly the same just draw in a different way and even the sound we say either again or kian okay and you can see very clearly we are uh, the Chinese also pounding uh, with, with the earth pounder and it means to build to establish and to construct both hieroglyph and Chinese men the same looks the same Okay, and of course, you know, you will see the Sumerian starts to build, uh, to write all these lines. Why is it the Chinese also write all these lines? Because it's a very strong concept that there were layers and layers of earth, you know, pounded together. And so I will show you the pound and ramming. And as I said, the English word ramming actually still holds the animal uh, right there and then um of course the sumerian uh, has this reading for the real animal any kind of horn animal not just cattle okay and then they have the do as to push the thrust and but I, if i show you that you'll be very easy to understand this energy that thrust at something and this is the dub in sumerian that also can mean hip up and pile and also to mean, mean in, in circle and then they have the the sound as tap as you can see two layers together to mean flatten something and then they also have the foot you know uh, like the foot with the movement of stepping up and down to mean the foundation and here we are this is the Chinese writing as you can see this is exactly what this picture is showing right there in it has the meaning of that and dip means to do something repeatedly and then in Chinese, in Cantonese, uh, verbally, we don't have a writing actually we say thumb or thumb it actually means to hammer something with your hand okay and then uh, we have a writing actually uh, uh, closely related to this picture right there we actually uh, means the tap and tap uh, the tap and tap tap and tap actually means to uh, to step repeatedly okay and i this is a picture i took in america and this is uh, a gentleman you know pounding on the earth you know this is adobe he's actually tap tap Okay, and then in English you also preserve all this word as tap, tam, stem, stop, and also even the word step. You take a step. It's when your foot puts down on the earth. It's a step. Okay, and then uh, the Sumerian has all this sound as the ground and the earth. And can you see all this line right there? It's actually expressing the foundation right there, and then. Um, the Chinese, of course, have this, and later the writing become like this. We still maintain a lot of line right there, and then the earth pounder become this thing right there, and uh, it read as K or K, that means the base of the foundation, and this one uh, itself, the earth pounder itself, become uh, still maintain the sound gong to meet work. The, uh, yeah, okay, now I, I want to show you a very complicated map of the top and the top sound, okay? And... And this is a sound call of a 
a lot of versatile concepts in different cultures and um, uh, I hope you will uh, follow me because it's very complicated right here. First of all, in the core, I will put you uh, through the Sumerian Dusang as thrashing at something. You can see very clearly the ram, uh, at ramming at something, right? So uh, the, the dub is uh, the to build a pile up something in Sumerian. In Chinese, we have a pile of earth with this movement line right there. That means uh, we read as to or tu and gradually become like this and become like this. Obviously, we were working with the soil right there. And um, and this is a marker that we call a determinative. You'll see again and again later. And then this is I, what I just showed you, the dub and the dam. And, and this is do, do. Do is actually very closely related to this. Do for us is to pound something. As you can see, there is a bow, but we borrow this uh, writing right there. Um, I will show you uh, the original form. It is like this. It's like two bulls, you know, taking turns to, uh, to, to make something. And, and in Sumerian, they actually have the same thing. Uh, like there with two bulls, you know, it it actually means to, uh, to whirl around. And in Chinese, it, all, it can also mean whirl around. If it's whirl around, we'll read it as dao as well. Do, 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 do. Can you hear the sound? And then, of course, in English, you have the tour word. The tour is to make circles, you know, around the earth, visiting different places. And then, uh, but why the tour is uh, borrowed to here? Because uh, in ritual pounding, it's always a male and a female taking turns to pound on the bow right there. So this is actually talking about the male and the female taking turns in pounding. And as again, this is a Sumerian term tap to uh, pound something and in English you can think of it as a double you know the tap and the dub and and also uh, this is the Sumerian word for foundation the foot uh, stepping and then these are the Chinese word for different uh, stepping words for we have tap tap dum okay and of course in English you have the tap tam stem you know with your feet of course and then um, and then you have you, you can turn it 90 degrees and look at it and this is as, has a do sound it started to mean building this is building piling up something this is also building uh, but this become you know the uh, the platform of a deity uh, but uh, you will see all this pounding line right there and of course you know they have this as the shine right there so you can see very clearly this is really means the base of this shine right there and then the Sumerian also um, have a, a form like that querying the same sound do you can see that is a nail right there for them it means to build something why because the Sumerian has this nail as a ritual nail to mark the point of uh, a building so but strangely the Chinese also have a nail like that and we call ding or or, or ding and then uh, from this word we develop into da sound da means to beat repeatedly beat something and then the ding and ding as you can see as uh, coincide with the uh, Sumerian right there and then we started to have this two piles together we have the sound do right there do is a pile and then you can see we pile higher and higher and of course it becomes the English you can also understand it as a tower because it's the beating sound and then the Chinese again with this dip or uh, da means to pile up something and um, this is the Chinese uh, component right there. We're piling these, these things up. For us, this means the earth, the earth itself. And then in Sumerian, there is the same sign, means the pasture. The pasture and also means abundance. Of course, if you pile abundance together like this, that means you are very rich. And of course, you know, in English, you can think in a way as to duplicate something. And in Spanish, tapial is to ram and also adobe. Tap here is the wall. Of course, you tap the wall, you know, and Derby in Somali. And, and you see, you go to Africa now, it's a wall. And then, of course, it come back to Adobe and Dub in English. And then pay attention to this A and then the ramming word. And draw the triangle. These three things right there, you can have the bull or you can have the ram horn right there as a concept in your head. 
and uh, of course in English you can also pay, uh, pay attention to dip as well you have to dip to dab okay and then the Chinese have a very clear wall right there means do do right there means the wall but without explanation I can use a Hebrew word to explain to you it means wall mang fence and surround this is exactly means the same in Chinese and in Hebrew tour and also do okay and then the tower and uh, means the top in Hebrew and in Chinese there is the toe means exactly the top and here uh, in Turkish Derby means to pound. Debris in English is something you break down. And toplamak means to build in Turkish. Dörfmak means to beat. Tepe is to mang. Tepe actually become the English tomb, okay? You can think of it as a tomb, I mean. Uh, the Arabic tabl is the drum when you, bound, when you pound on the drum. And the watab is actually uh, the... Uh, jumping around with your foot and of course in english you still have the word thumb you see all these words right there goes back to the foot right there from the human beginning how we how we started to make uh, the foundation but you can see that the arabic actually concentrate more on the uh, dancing and and playing music but why is it because from the human concept the way at the word actually from building to earthwork to mang to tomb from beating to hammering to the sound of drum and to stepping and to dancing so the concept actually uh, uh, develop you know naturally and then I circle this out you know to let you see the similarity between all these Sumerian and all these Chinese you can see that the ancient did you know communicate a lot but what happened if you go to places where there is no soil and of course you know human are very ingenious and then uh, this is a picture I took in uh, Yemen and when there is no soil and how do you pile up things and of course you know they can do different things of course you pile different materials and um, this is a picture that I took in China they pile up oyster shells right there so this yeah okay um, I will stop the, the size right there I hope I haven't overwhelmed you that map was really complicated but I hope you get the idea that how close our language really are and how ingenious people are human beings have been communicated all these years and uh, we can actually find a lot of proofs you know we have to look at it deeply okay thanks for watching bye